Victor, how's yes. it going? Welcome back, everybody, to uh, to uh, this this little chat we have here. Uh, three in the peen, one in Justine. What? Where? One in Justine? <laughs> That's what I heard. I mean, you're saying three in the peen, but like, what? We got two other fingers. What are we doing with the other two? Where, where, where are they disappearing to? They're just dilly dallying. Anyways, hi everyone, welcome back. <laughs> I I didn't know how to open the episode, but yes, we're here, Victor and I, on another beautiful, chilly winter's day in Los Angeles. Oh, is yeah, it it is getting much chillier today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the winter is upon us, and it is coming. Yeah, but I welcome it. I like the winter. You know, yep. I'm one of those too. people that even though it's like cold as hell, I'm still wearing uh, basketball shorts and a shirt. Bro, me too. <laughs> like I, I at night I do tend to don the 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 maybe like the long sleeve pajama shirt, maybe maybe some uh some pajama pants. But that's mm-hmm. only for those nights that that even with just the window open, it cools your entire room, and that's when I'm like, "Ooh, time to time to cozy up with a nice movie today." Yeah. Speaking of movies, Victor. Yes. I recently finished watching the the How to Train Your Dragons trilogy. Oh, the whole trilogy. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Last time, last time you told me you you were just watching the first one so far. Yeah, and I'm I'm happy to say that it's it's pretty good. Like yeah, I liked it. it, I enjoyed it. That's good to hear. The the first one is definitely the best one. Yeah. And... It, well, like I personally think the first one is the best one just cuz like it builds the world, like it sh- it shows you this uh, amazing world that you never really thought of before. And that's always fun, you know, beginning the journey. Yeah. Okay, so spoilers for anyone that hasn't seen the second movie. I just really want to ask you this question, Jolin. Uh huh. What did you think about the scene where they reunite with Hiccup's mom? Like when they first reunite, or like, like the whole family? Like yeah, the whole family. Like when Hiccup's dad meets, like sees that his wife wasn't killed by the dragon, and they're in that ice cavern thing. I thought it was it was nice, but uh-huh. at the same time, I feel like the story writers kind of were like. Or like, we, we need to build on the whole like uh the the husband and wife are reuniting because at that whole time it was just them like they didn't give a shit about hiccup like oh. being there oh oh okay so you mean the whole scene was just just all about the husband and wife reuniting yeah pretty much oh, okay. like not them reuniting as a family but more like i me bride is back and then she's like oh the love of my life is back i mean I feel like I feel like they focused hoity, hoity, toy. Hoity, 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 hoity. <laughs> <laughs> I think they focused mainly on the fact that like the relationship on them two, uh-huh. just because of the fact that she was gone for so long, so they couldn't just jump right into it and be like, "Oh my god, everything's back to normal." You know, they had yeah. to they had to focus on like, you know, people don't just jump right back into things. You gotta give them time. You gotta give them time to process stuff. Yeah, and, fair enough. But, but um, I mean, why do you why do you ask? Like, I feel like there was a kind of answer you wanted me to give. No, no, I was just curious because I myself, when I first saw that that scene, like I knew I, it's kind of obvious. Like you can kind of see that, you know, it's going to happen, especially from the beginning of the movie. You're like, oh, hey, once you find out that she's alive and it's Hiccup's mom, you're like, oh, OK, then clearly she's going to reunite with the husband, too. Uh-huh. Um, But. But it really did catch me off guard what what he said when they first reunited because I was kind of expecting like like him to be super excited and rush to her and hug her and be like, oh, my God, I missed you. You're alive. Or or at least be like like how she was expecting his reaction where he would be mad and shit. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I was expecting that, too. But the the fact that he was just like, you're as beautiful as the day I lost you. That caught me off guard because I was like, yo, yo, that that is a that's a true man right there. Like, holy shit, that's that's what you gotta say if you ever, you know, encounter that situation. So I was just I was I was pleasantly surprised. Like I was caught off guard, if anything. And I just wanted to see what what 
your perspective on the scene was as well. Like, what did you notice? What didn't you notice? That sort of stuff. Oh, uh, okay. I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Ex- I I was expecting him to be like, "Oh, you're as beautiful as the day I lost you." Uh huh. Like I'd be lying if I said like, "Yeah, I saw that coming." But <laughs> at the same time, like it wasn't one of the possibilities that I saw. Like I I thought I thought he would have gone with the like, like where have you been this whole time or something, you know? Yeah, or like like he would have been more frantic and be like, "Are you okay? Like what what's happened all this this years and like why are you alone? Like all these questions sort of thing." Yeah, but that was a that was a nice little touch. Yeah, that- like even though they're they're vikings and stuff he still has like a soft spot and everything yeah it, it really it really just like at least it, it showed a nice perspective on the fact that even though their lives are filled with fighting dragons or like just surviving in general that love or at least the concept of marriage is still just pretty much similar to ours you know if you love a person you just want to be with them that sort of stuff yeah it was nice yeah all right, well, um, let's let's get to the meat of what this podcast is going to be about, Jolyn. Uh, what do we have for these beautiful, lovely people listening in on us today? Yeah, so today we're tackling the the moralities of ethics. <gasps> Ooh, okay. And we're going to do this by answering uh, ethical questions. Oh, a real morality test, eh? Yeah, for, so for like uh, the uninitiated people who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, there's a classic question, which is the trolley example, where there's a runaway train or a runaway trolley, and this person uh, is, sees the trolley coming up ahead, and she has a choice to whether if she if she changes the trajectory of the train, right? Yep. Uh, it'll hit this one very large person, but if she does nothing. It'll kill five people. Yeah. But it's like, but it's not just that. It's not like as simple as like, oh, you know, it's easy. You kill one person, save five. It's not that bad. It's actually the one that I, the one that I read was like, um, they're standing on a platform and she sees the trolley is like losing control. And next to her is a very large person. So either she pushes the large person in the train's way and, you know, he's large enough that it'll actually stop the trolley but he'll die uh-huh or if she doesn't push the guy five five of the workers will get killed really that that's that's the one that's the version you you saw yeah that's the one that i found like as i was looking for these questions because there's, there's a like the classic one where it's like oh you push the lever it kills five people you don't push the lever it only kills like i don't know like one person that you know that's that's what i was gonna say I was like, because the version you saw where it's like the large person, it's like, it, it's it's still not as challenging because it's still just you're choosing one life over over five. You know, it's, it's a morality question of like, are you willing to sacrifice one person for the greater good? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not that difficult, or at least I feel like many people out there wouldn't have a difficult um, choice. But the question I tend to see a lot when it comes to this situation is that, the person you're the the one person that would die would be is very significant to you like your mother your 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 father your your siblings or someone you care about your wife yeah. husband it's basically someone you know versus like five random strangers exactly like that that to me is more more challenging because it's like sacrifice someone you truly care about and have like attached feelings to or save a majority of random people so I, that that's what makes it a little more difficult in my perspective yeah that one's definitely more difficult like the whole like one stranger versus five strangers that's pretty easy yeah you know so just strangers but yeah the, anyway that's we're not answering that question that's just like a, a like, example this is, this is this is the kind of questions that you'll be hearing us talk about exactly yeah morality it's a little taste test <laughs> a little appetizer wet your whiskers just uh, wet your wish over there, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, I feel like that question a lot of people have encountered at least once or twice throughout the internet because that was very popular at one point. In yeah, yeah exactly. History. Like a lot of YouTubers made videos like the morality engine or something. Yeah, exactly. The morale machine. So so if anything, we're just going to we're going to avoid that question. We're just going to focus on some other ones. Hopefully you guys potentially haven't heard. Yeah. All right. So this one's a pretty pretty good one i've i've had this 
happened to me once or twice in my life. And oh, okay. if something at a yard sale is far more valuable than the posted price, do you let the seller know that it's more valuable than what they're ch- trying to sell it as? Yeah. So say like say like someone's selling, you know, some some Nikes, right? Uh-huh. And they think like they're the general like run of the no real n- run of the mill Nike. Mm-hmm. And they have them posted for like twenty dollars, but apparently these are like some special like nineteen ninety four like Air Jordan Maxes or something. I don't know. I don't. I'm not a shoe person. Yeah, I but get like you. the resale, like the reconditioning and resale value is like six hundred dollars, and this person's only selling them for like twenty. Yeah. Like, do you let the seller know, like, hey, these are actually pretty valuable, or do you like? say nothing and and get yourself a steal yeah and then you profit from it or or you get it for your own collection whatever you want exactly so victor what would you do in that situation not the not the shoe situation specifically because i myself am not a sneakerhead as well (laughs) if there was a valuable art uh piece that someone was selling for much cheaper i would most likely most of the time definitely just profit from it I would definitely just get the the mm-hmm. item for the cheap price that they're selling it and then either keep it in my collection and be like one of those people that that when I invite my friends over I'm like oh look get guess guess what I got and they're like hey yeah it's, it's pretty rare and I only got it for 20 bucks or I would resell it on the internet and make like a huge profit from it you know depending on how much it costs it that sort of stuff yeah but if it's if it's something I'm not interested in which is very rare like, like, cause even if it's something I'm, I, I don't care about, I would still most likely go for the profit. But if it's something just extremely rare and I could tell the, the seller is very passionate about this item, but they just, they're selling it cause they like, they're desperate for money. Like, you know, it's, it's hard times, economy's bad or whatever. They lost their job. They just need to make rent and they're selling all their valuables just to try to make ends meet. And then I come across it and I'm like, oh, hey, I heard about this. This is really valuable. And then I see the price is like only a few bucks. I'm like, I would tell them. I'd be like, hey, look, I don't care. I'm not going to purchase this item, but definitely do your research online. Maybe look into it. And this item alone could possibly help you more than selling your entire stock that you have right now. And and then I would just walk away. But, But that's literally like a one in 10 situation. Most of the time, I would just take it for myself. Well, yeah. what about you, Jolene? Would you, well, what's your, uh, I'm in the same boat as you. Usually if I like see something that's too good to like, if they're, if the pricing for it is really low and I know it's worth like way more than it should be, I'll more, more likely than not, just not say anything and take the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Cause then it's like, what if you need the money? You know, what if you're struggling or, or like you, your family could use some, some extra cash you know you'd be like hey i could i could resell it for myself yeah. I like quick little little side story about that my dad back in like mm-hmm. back in his younger days he would go to the swap meet and like buy up all these broken like craft yeah. tools or craftsman okay. tools because like when sears was still around they were the main proprietor of craftsmen so if you had like a broken tool they had like a lifetime Ooh, warranty okay and you didn't have to prove like that you're the original purchaser or something. Like you can have like a crack socket and then give it to them and they'll give you like a brand new one. Oh, nice. So that's what he did. And he like accumulated a bunch of tools like that. And he was like, yeah, dude, I would buy them for, I would buy like broken wrenches and broken like sockets for like 50 cents. Yeah. And, and then, then you get a just... brand new tool that was worth like 10 bucks. Yeah, exactly. It would, it would, it would just benefit him for, for the long run. Yeah, but that's that's pretty much it. So yeah, I would I would just take the bargain. <laughs> which is funny, which is funny because of the of that story. Cause I'm one of those people that had no idea that craftsmen or Sears had that sort of stuff. So if I were to buy, you know, a tool from Sears or Craftsman, I would just be like, Okay, well it's broken, time to buy a new one. Mm-hmm. That's that's cool. That's uh, it's good to it's good to know your your products. Yeah. Not bad. All right. That was a good question. I like I liked it. Yeah, well, what's next, children? What you got for us? All right. The next one is, are you more worried about doing things right or doing the right thing? Ooh, doing things Ooh. right or doing the right thing. Yes. All right. All right. I, I, th- I think I need some time to think about it. What, 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 do you have an answer for this? 
I think I'm more worried about doing the right thing than uh-huh. doing things right. Okay. Because it's like, like if I'm building a doghouse with my dad, right? Yes. And then he has like this whole vision and he has like everything laid out step by step. Like, this is what I want you to do. And I see that like one of the steps that he wrote down isn't, isn't, uh, you know, like it's going to cause the foundation to be weak or there's going to be like a gap so air can get into the doghouse. Yeah. I would rather fix it myself and like go the extra step than to just follow his instructions and then be like, see, your your crappy instructions made my doghouse crappy. Hmm. Okay. Is that I don't I don't know why, but it felt like that. Like I couldn't make a good example in my mind Uh, like that. That's a pretty good example. But I feel like the question is asking, like, you do things right or you do the right thing. Well, yeah, I mean, if you want, like, a really extreme example, yeah, it, it's, like, one of those animations that I saw on YouTube where, like, uh, where, like, Goofy and Mickey are, like, yeah, are deployed in Vietnam, and they're, like, these super <laughs> soldiers that have to carry out a mission, and then Goofy's, like, we can't do this, Mick, like, we have a, we have to, you know, think about our country, and you gotta think about the people you're impacting, and Mickey's like, Goofy, we're soldiers. We have to do what we're told, no matter the no matter what happens. And then mm-hmm. like that that's the the really extreme, like doing the right thing or doing things right. Oh, okay. All right. That's that's perfect. That's actually the, the example I, I kinda needed. Yeah, it's like it's like if you get a secret mission from the government but it impacts millions of people, are you gonna carry out the mission because your government mm-hmm. tells you to do it, or are you gonna think about these people? yeah potentially impacting yeah okay that's perfect yeah because because see with with your example of like let's say let's say it's a like a work-related example right Uh doing things right would be you know uh following your employer's uh rules you know you fucking the customer's always right you got to do it this way you got you know you can't diverge you can't pretty much like no no free thinking allowed of sorts yeah and then doing things right would be like hey you know you go out to the the customer and be like you know this shop actually sells it for much cheaper than than what our company's selling maybe you want to go check them out instead and maybe save yourself some few bucks so at that point when it comes to work when it's like not really significant not really impactful i would just rather like you know go along my day just doing things right and get my paycheck at the end of the day and not really care but when it comes to that extreme example where where it will affect other people's lives, not just your own, uh, I would definitely try to do things right or do the right thing, actually. Yeah, sorry, I, I already mixed it yeah, up. Yeah, right you now. mixed it up a little. <laughs> sorry, I, I would definitely try to do the right thing rather than doing things right. You know, growing up, thinking about joining the army, the, going back to that example... <laughs> uh it's always an app and there's always an option because people are always like oh if you're not gonna go to college then at least join the army and they'll pay for your college that sort of stuff yeah so definitely if i was a soldier or if i was just like my government or my country asked me to do something that would you know hurt innocent people for no reason aside from like it would benefit the country in the long run hell no i would gladly you know save innocent people i would gladly fucking help them out you know give them my own food give them rations whatever even if it was against the rules and even if i got court-martialed or thrown in prison or fucking tortured like whatever you know i I would fucking suffer or i would die knowing that i did the right thing you know i i I don't care the consequences to me as long as the consequences were negative were not negative to to the people i helped yeah so, but like okay with that army example right yes because i thought about like you know the person who had to drop the nuclear bombs on hiroshima and nagasaki uh-huh like i think in their mind they were doing the right thing because they were like oh if we don't attack them they're gonna like continue to kill our troops and stuff and then only after like the deed was done they were probably like shit i fucked up yeah definitely so i mean i don't know it's it's hard I like I go throughout my life trying to do the right thing, you know, like I Mm -hmm. won't try to be a dick to people or like I'll try to lend a helping hand whenever I can. Yeah. So that's why I kind of agree with that. 
But in that extreme case, like if you don't do it, you're going to get punished. And then they're just going to find someone else to do it. You know, like in, in the case of like the person who dropped a nuclear, an atomic bomb, if he didn't want to fly, he probably would have got like arrested. And then they would have just been like, all right, Johnson, you're going to fly next. And he'll be like, yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. So it was going to get done <laughs> anyways. It's just whether you wanted to do it or not. But see, the way the way I see it in that perspective, it's like, sure, you're, you'll get in trouble. The deed will still be done by someone else, even if, if you're not the one doing it. But at least your your hands are clean. Your conscience is clean. Like, you know, I didn't fucking pull the trigger. I didn't make all these people die. And, and the war ended. But you still feel bad about it. But at the same time, it's like, at least it's not your fault directly. You get me? Like, yeah, you, I know. You I know, like you it, yeah. you stood by your your uh, your choices and and knew that the choice that you picked was correct and and the morally right one. But let's say let's kick it up another notch and let's say you're you are that pilot, right? And you are gonna drop that bomb in World War Two, and you realize, like like let's say you know the the situation changed where there's no one else. It's do or die. You have to choose whether it's you drop the bomb or not. And there's like no other second chances. There's no one else to 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 do it besides you. I definitely would still do it, uh-huh. and I would and I would hate myself for the rest of my life. But just just because I feel like not dropping those bombs would have would have actually extended the war. You get me? Like 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 without yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah, without that huge scare that japan got from from you know the america's atomic power they would have kept going they would have kept attacking you know moving inland attacking taking over china india and germany would have helped them and they, more people would have suffered more people would have died in the long run and it's like if there's no other option i would that's for me that's the morally correct choice to do like to end the war then and there and it's really hard. It's still a really hard option. I'm not, I, even though I'm picking it so quickly, uh, it's still fucking difficult as hell. But I, I, I would stick with that choice. Yeah, I agree. All right, that was that was a great question, Jolin. It's hard, Damn. man. That's, that's, that's very why it's difficult. Like a, it's a morality. It's a moral and ethic question. You know, there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. Exactly. And it's like, and you, even with what I just said, I'm pretty sure. There are people that that are listening in on us that would make an entire list of what's wrong with my choice. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with that. And I, if anything, I I encourage them to do so. But you know, it's it. That's the whole point. It's a tough choice. Yeah. All right. I think we should take a quick break for our Spotify listeners. Awesome. Yeah. Just uh, stick around, and we'll be back. We'll be back. Okay, Victor, we're back. Yeah. We're going to we're going to you know kind of get out of that out of that weird, you know, depressing kind of talk <laughs> about doing the right thing or <laughs> doing things right. Yeah. And okay. It's going to be more we're going to have this we're going to start off with this lighthearted question. Oh, all right. I feel like everyone's kind of thought about this. Is mm-hmm. it considered stealing to take pens from the bank? Or ex or what about extra napkins from a fast food restaurant? Mm. Oh, so is it considered stealing to do either? Yeah, or, or both. Like to take to take more than you already need, or like if if the people who work at let's say a fast food restaurant, because everyone's kind of done that. Uh huh. Right. Like if they give you extra, if you if they already gave you napkins and like condiments and stuff, but you just decide to take more. Hmm. Like, is that considered stealing? Uh, in my opinion, I would say no, just because of the fact that is it like no, no, like period or no semicolon, depending on how much you take. Yes, that's literally what I was going to say. Uh, I would literally pause to think like, wait, how much are you taking, though? Oh, yeah. It's okay. like, they'll say like they give you the normal, like the normal amount of ketchups that a fast food place gives you is like four packets, right? OK. Yeah. Is it stealing if you take four more mm, no all right what about a handful maybe 
Cause see, okay, I don't know. It's because you, you. First of all, you, you just asked me a different question. Cause you know, you went from napkins to ketchup. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So just, it's like, yeah. so it's like, it's like if it's napkins, they usually restaurants they already give you like in enough napkins. You know what I mean? I, I'm, a, I'm a type of person that I don't need many napkins. Like I literally could just use one or Man, two. At you the think most. they give you enough? But freaking Wendy's cheaps out on the napkins. They only give you like two. If, if if a restaurant gives you napkins and you go back and you take the entire fucking container of napkins and empty it out, yes, that is why the fuck do you need that many napkins? Like, <laughs> like do, do you need toilet paper? Is that it? Like, are you taking as many napkins because you're you're that's your toilet paper of the week? Well, what's like it, it makes me question, but it's unnecessary. But at the same time, I still wouldn't categorize it as stealing. It's it's unnecessary and you shouldn't do it, but I wouldn't call it stealing. The the napkins are there for a reason. The napkins are out into the public so you could grab them for a reason. Like they're expendable. They're not they don't cost that much. You get a lot of them for for a little bit of money. Yeah, sure, you take a buttload of them and maybe don't leave enough for the rest of the customers. You're an asshole. You know, you don't even if you do need them, it's like leave some for the rest of us buddy that sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> but even then like when it comes down to the line i wouldn't consider it stealing it would i would just consider it unnecessary for sure all right i'm not gonna go into like super depth on this question uh-huh the most that i'll go into depth on is if you order some like with the napkins and ketchup packets right yes if you order food and they don't give you any then you can ask and they'll give you some. But if they already gave you some and then you like take more, I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna say yes, that's stealing, because they already gave you some. So you're going with the stealing as in like you're taking more than what you already have. Yeah, because I mean you can ask for more and they'll probably be fine with it. Yeah. But if you're just straight up like, I need more of this and you just take some, then mm -hmm. I I mean in the simplest terms, that is stealing. Yeah, you're that's that's you're stealing because you're greedy. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I can see that. I think there's logic. They already gave you enough napkins and you shouldn't be eating in your car. Frosty gets everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and even then, even <laughs> even Dude, with your you, all even, right. Chicken go, nuggets go uh -huh. from a fast food place are like the perfect thing to munch on while you're driving. I I agree. Because then, what tiny, if you, there's only what if you one add of them a at a time. Barbecue. Well, I, I don't eat my chicken nuggets with sauce. Okay, there you go. See, so I but don't, I don't in, do the barbecue, in, but I know people will do like ketchup or barbecue on their chicken nuggies. See, you, that's what I'm saying. You gave the example of like ch barbecue spilling on your steering wheel or something. Yeah, because I needed something extra to use the napkins. You can't use two napkins to wipe your face. What are you rich or something? <laughs> <laughs> just spray bust out the the Benji and just wipe that off. <laughs> exactly. Might as well just ask your passenger, like, "Hey, can you get my face?" <laughs> Yeah. Uh, honestly, though, yeah, yeah, I agree. The nuggets are big for for a uh, mobile munching. Yeah, because they're just little contained, you know, pieces of meat, and you're just like num num num. Yeah, and even then, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it, but it's like you're you're eating the nuggets, and your your hand gets what crumbs the the breading on them sometimes. Oh, yeah, exactly. Sometimes. So it's like, let's say you finish your nuggets. You're only going to need one fucking napkin to wipe off your hand from the grease or the, the crumbs, whatever you have from the nuggets. And there you go. You're good to go afterwards. Why do you need yeah. like a handful of napkins? You put them in your car. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I know. I do. My parents do that too. They grab like crap ton of napkins from like McDonald's or Starbucks or something and they put them in their car and they're like, oh, pass me a napkin. And I'm like, when the hell did you go to Starbucks? And they're like, oh, like two months ago. <laughs> see, see i don't i don't do that in that sense like i don't take i don't take i don't take them from the place i literally just like i said before i only use one or two napkins so when the restaurant gives me like a handful of napkins in my bag i only use one or two and then i have these buttload still left over so i'm like all right might as well just keep them in my car why throw yeah. them away yeah all right next question yes if all right, this is kind of a actually, Victor, pick a number six, seven, or eight. Six, seven, or eight. Six, six, seven, or eight. Let's just go with lucky number seven over here. All right, 
Uh, so number seven, am I obligated to lend money to friends and family? Okay, that that's that's simple for me. For me, it's a very strict with a period at the end. No, you are not obligated. It's it's as simple as that. My perspective as or the reason why is because even though they're related to you, even though you have some emotional connection to them money is something that we all need to survive in this capitalistic society in this world you do not have to share with anybody if you're the one that has been working your butt off to to earn it you know you've been spending your life you've been spending your hours to make that money it's your money you decide who you give it to but you have no obligation to give it to anybody but that's the thing you know let's say let's say you're you're just that that type of person well even then that's not an obligation never mind yeah just i'll leave it at that i'll leave it at that you have no obligation to give it to anybody whether you actually decide to do so or not that's just from the kindness of your own heart you know what i mean just because you're a good friend you're a good son whatever you are but obligation obligation from this question no what do you think jolin i'm in the same boat i don't think you're obligated like, first of all, I don't think you sh- you have any obligations to, like, anyone. Unless you're, like, married or a parent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes. But for, like, us, for example, uh, 20, 24, almost 25 spry young somethings. Mm-hmm. We're not Single. obligated to do anything. Like, sure, we may feel compelled to, like, lend our friends and family money. Yeah where like they shouldn't demand it and be like oh you need to give us like no i'm not obligated i don't take care of you didn't you didn't come out of this womb (laughs) you didn't come out of these balls (laughs) exactly yeah exactly yeah there's a difference between feeling compelled and being obligated Mm -hmm. yep that's 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 what i meant with the the, you're a kind person because you feel compelled to do so funny story i think uh one of our friends was a little too compelling when it came to like lending me money. Why? Because he he would like lend me like a dollar fifty to buy fries after school, like almost every single day, and I never paid him back. Really? Yeah, I think I paid him like forty bucks, but and we called it even at that. But I was like, I I owe you well more than forty dollars. <laughs> Damn. Was that like every single day that you just get money from? Yeah, him? pretty much. Oh damn, he is a nice dude. My yeah. God, if you're listening, you know who you are. <laughs> we we called it even. All right, don't come at <laughs> try, try to cancel you online. <laughs> Just be like Jolin is a money hungry person. You read on that price, and I stopped <laughs> borrowing after that. See, honestly, even I forgot who it was, but I do remember you uh, telling me about how you you brought forty bucks for that person. I just don't remember who the person was. So I was yeah. like, we'll talk about that later, Jolin. Mm-hmm. But yeah, exactly. When it comes to this question, I feel like it's clear shut. You know, no, you're not obligated. You did make a good point on that, which is what I was going with when, when I kind of trailed off a bit. When it comes to family, as in like, they're your kids and they're your wife, where it's like, you're still not obligated 100%. But it's like you made a promise to to these kids and to your to your significant other that you're married to that you were gonna you know be there for them through thick and thin, and uh-huh. that includes monetary you know which well, is money in general, which is include that money is part of it you're you're gonna you're gonna support them and you're gonna care for them, and you know yeah, you're not obligated to do so, but that'll just make you a deadbeat dad or or a horrible, horrible person that shouldn't have gotten married in the first place. That sort of mm-hmm. stuff. You get me? But in general, no. No obligation needed. Second to last question. Yes. Is it okay to fantasize about someone else when you're with your partner? Oh, damn it, Joe. God, that's... Ooh. You sneaky bastard. You just came out with this curveball over here. Yeah. Is okay. Can can you say it one more time? Just just let me process it. Is it okay to fantasize about someone else when you're with your partner? Now, when now, just 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 for us, 
a little explanation or a little more details. Fantasize, do you see this question as asking specifically only in bed or fantasizing in general when you're just with them, you're thinking of someone else? Um, well, it, it could be whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to like put boundaries on the question because then it kind of uh-huh. sways the morality one way or the other. Mm hmm. Um, versus whereas you, if you put boundaries on it, do we know where your morality lies? Okay. Yeah, you're right. That's true. All right. Well, if, if there's no boundaries, it, wait, was the question asking if it's okay? Yeah. Okay. Then, then my answer is no, it's not okay. Um, All right. so, so the boundaries I, I guess I would put for myself, like just, just to be more specific would be. If you're thinking of another person, you know, not not in a sexual manner, but just thinking like like this person has made me happy today, happier than my partner has today, you know, like I had a funny joke or or just a good time, like talking together or like I actually just felt utter joy spending this time with this person and therefore I am thinking about them right now, even though I'm on a date with my significant other, I don't see that as completely wrong. And like, I see that as, as okay. But at the same time, you're not seeing the other person as like, Oh God, like I miss them. I need them in my life. Like, God, I wish I was with them right now. You're not seeing them as like, if you're in bed with your, with your significant other, you're, you're imagining it's them that you're, you know, sleeping with. Yeah. If, if you are doing that, then I, that's, that's wrong. In my opinion, like you shouldn't be doing that. Like at that point, if that other person, if you're fantasizing about them while you're with your partner, then maybe you don't want to be with your partner anymore. And that's a clear sign that you should probably move on and stop wasting their time and stop, you know, probably don't hurt their feelings. But yeah, that's, it's pretty much it. Like, as long as it's not desire that you're fantasizing about the other person when you're with your partner, then it should be fine. As long as it's just like joyous experiences, like just fond memories. But if it is, if, if desire does creep into the factor or it becomes a factor, then that's when it becomes morally wrong, in my opinion. Okay. What about you, Jonah? What's, what's your perspective on this? It, it's fine until you decide to act on it. Ah, okay, I see. Like, even if you're so, because because the way that I was thinking about it was like, it, like if I'm with my girlfriend, and then for yes. some reason, like I can't get Ariana Grande out of my head, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, maybe she did something that I'm like, you know, Ariana's a pretty good person, or or yeah. even like if it does come time to like when we're in bed and stuff, and I, for some reason, I'm still thinking about Ariana. Yeah, and it's it's like whatever it happens, you know. We're humans. I don't know why I'm thinking about it, but I am. And you could talk to your partner about it. And it's like okay. she's a celebrity. There's no way that you're gonna like ever meet her in person. So like it's fine. Okay. But when when it's someone personal, and then you decide like you start to kind of like want this fantasy to become a reality, that's where it gets like, all right, you gotta stop there, bud. Okay. Like one of the things that I thought of as well to be like, you know what it's okay is um I heard uh like you know Aaron from the Game Grumps? Yes. Apparently Aaron and Stuzy, they like they like people watch and like fantasize about people's lives like together. Like they can be at like a Starbucks and see like a cute barista and both Susie and Aaron will be like yo, isn't that Barissa, like, really cute? And they'll just be like, yeah. Like, they'll talk about it, and, like, they're married and comfortable with their relationship, and, like, nothing's gonna affect them. They're fine. See, but that's not really desire. That's just, like, attraction, or, or at least I know, but that's, finding that's features fantasizing. attractive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's per- and I, I stated, like, that's perfectly fine, as long as desire doesn't become a factor in the fantasy. Yeah, so I mean, like, we do agree on that part where, like, I guess it's okay as long as it doesn't go into this desire. Yeah. But even in in my aspects, like, with the whole, like, if you start fantasizing and, like, desiring a celebrity, that's, like, way out of your, 
out of the realm. Of, that's like out of the realm of possibility. So it's like even at that point, I still think it's fine. It's kind of weird and like disrespectful to your partner, but you know you're not sleeping with like Ariana Grande. When when you when you put it that way, yes, I I really don't see a problem with it because when I was trying to describe my point of view. I was imagining like your your close friend or I was imagining a, a person that you hang out with on the weekends or you see like at the coffee shop and you talk to them on like pretty frequently. And then that's the person you're fantasizing about when you're with your partner. I, I wasn't imagining like a celebrity that was completely out of your league or out of your reach that you will for sure never really fulfill those desirable fantasies that you're having. Yeah. Okay. And even in that sense... You can have like lustful thoughts about them, like lustful fantasies, kind of like what you're what you're alluding to with desire. Yes, but as long as you don't like actively seek it, like you only go to the coffee shop and like only want to talk to this person and maybe do things like between the two of you. Yes, like if it doesn't so, go to that extreme, like I still think it's fine. Yeah. Okay. See, I'm like. I'm I'm okay with um you having those desires for this friend. Let's just go with a friend. Yeah. Um if you're having these desires with a friend and you talk to it with your partner, if they're okay with it or whatever, like let's say um pr- pretty much what I'm trying to get at is as long as you look and don't do anything and and you use this desire that you have for the friend as fuel for more love for your partner then that's perfectly fine with me because most likely what this what this desire you're feeling is just lust and and lust will easily go away once you're like you know once you're in bed with your partner and therefore therefore you know it, it, nothing will happen you know you'll still be able to see this friend you'll still be probably fantasizing about them but then when you actually want to go through with these actions you turn to your partner and they will help you with that and you'll realize that you know hey you're actually you love your partner and these feelings you're having for your friend are actually just lust and desire. And therefore they're not really as meaningful as the emotions you have with your partner. You get me? Like when it's that situation, it's, it's fine as, but I guess it's most, most likely just what you said, as long as you don't um, pursue these actions, then, then when you do, that's when it turns bad. Yeah. Cause it, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of also, <laughs> sorry, it kind of just dwells like, even on fake people, like fake, like, uh, like anime people, you know what I mean? Uh-uh. <laughs> it's like you're fantasizing about this anime character, even though they're fake. And like, and, and then you ask your partner to cosplay for them if they're okay with that. And then there you go. Your desire is filled. Your lust is filled. And then you don't really think about it because you're back in reality with your partner and the person you love. And there you go. It's gone. It's ended. End of story. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a good question. When you said fake people, I didn't think you were gonna say like anime. I thought you were oh, gonna say like like oh this fake ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like Victor. It's like the the, the two faced motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like at that point, why are you even in the relationship if they're fake as hell? Uh, wait, so so just just to re re like reiterate or just to make sure I have a clear point of your your response. Well, you're okay with your partner fantasizing about someone else as long as they don't do anything about it. Yeah, because it could just be like a fleeting thought. Mm-hmm. Or kind of like that episode of South Park where like Wendy starts to like fantasize about Cartman, but it's because they're working together on something. Yeah. Like it could just be that. See, but then she kisses him at the end. Yeah, but she she wasn't with. Wait, was Wendy with Stan at that point? I think so. Yeah, I think that was too early. I think that was when Stan was still like throwing up whenever Wendy would talk to her. Well, talk I mean, even, no. Well, I mean, even even when he throws up, he they were still together at one point. Like he would throw up every time they kiss. All right, and Victor, this is the last question of the day. Oh, okay. Well, this so is far they've been. Uh, it's kind of a Karen question. Oh, well, I mean, so far they've been really good questions, man. You, you've been hitting the home runs over here. So uh, I think I'm ready for this one. 
All right. If someone tells an offensive joke, is it your responsibility to speak up about it? <laughs> if a bear shits in the woods, <laughs> is it your responsibility to go wipe his ass? Okay, I, I actually want to hear your perspective on this one first. I, I feel like I have an answer, but I want to hear yours. So, I want to say yes, but I'm not one for confrontation. Okay. So, in my mind, I would be like, hey, that's a really fucked up joke. And I, like, even though I'm not offended, like, you shouldn't be saying those kind of things. Okay. But in reality, I would probably just, like, hear the joke, roll my eyes, and walk away. All right. Okay. Yeah, I, c- I could see that. Because especially, like, like you know, the, the like, there's, I was going to say, like, a Jew joke, but since I'm Asian, I could talk about Asian jokes. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, this, right? This, like, I can, yeah. I can be like, hey, that's messed up. That's stereotyping. You shouldn't say those things. Uh-huh. Because, like, it's part of my ethnic background and i can i can take offense to that but if i hear someone say like a black joke like as much as i would want to speak up about it and like i'm not in the right well it's not my place to to stand up for like another for like when when someone else can clearly do it themselves i don't know i can't explain i didn't explain that well no, 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 I, I got you. Like, like you're, you're right though. Like, if if it's not if it's not something that personally offends you, then you feel like your fight wouldn't have much like substance to it. So, like, yeah, you, you're sticking for what's right. You're still trying to, you know, be politically correct and 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 at least inform them that it's very offensive, even if it's not your race, if it's not your background. Um, but at the same time, it's like what what point is there for for uh confrontation if it's not you that's being offended right away like or if it's not affecting you directly like yeah so so you would still not be happy about it but yet you wouldn't confront them unless it personally affected you and you could tell them like hey that's extremely offensive and i do not appreciate that yeah, if anyone that like got this far in the podcast and is still listening, like what do you do in that circumstance? When like you hear something offensive and you want to like speak up about it, but you know like you're not really you're not are, like are, in the place to speak up about it. Are are you asking them in the same premise as the question we're asking where it's an Pretty offensive much. joke or are you just generalizing just an offensive thing in general? I guess more of a joke because if it's like an offensive thing, like you know, like if if some some like anti-Semitic person is like chanting like pro-white stuff or like anti-whatever they are, yeah. then you can be like, dude, that's fucked up, and you should like stop. Be ashamed. It. Mm-hmm. But when it's a joke, you know, people are less like people have that cop out to be like, dude, chill, like it's just a joke. Yeah. Versus if you're like serious about it, it's like, all right, now you're just being a dick yeah okay yeah okay so so yeah that, that's a uh <clears throat> leave, leave a comment down below and answer jolin's question on just mm-hmm. an offensive joke um my response to it is very um it's a it's a very situational response um it because i'm the type of person that that i think when it comes to comedy uh, either everything's uh, okay to joke about or nothing's okay to joke about um but at the same time i'm not some fucking racist it ignorant like fucking bigot that will purposely make racist jokes and then use that cop out where it's like chill man it's just a fucking joke like don't get your panties in a twist that sort of shit like that's that's dumb as fuck like that's you're using comedy as your way to like project your racism onto others and that's not Mm -hmm. okay um and that's why i mean it's situational because it's like if you're in a room or at least in a group of friends or or like you're in a room with strangers and you're all telling jokes and you say mildly offensive jokes but then they laugh and you get a positive response from that it means that hey okay these people are okay they understand that it's all a joke they understand that you're not being racist because you actually hate these people you're just fucking you know it's all in the in in the sake of comedy 
go you roll with it you go along with it you keep you keep you you could joke about anything at that point you could like you know just don't push it but then if you're in a room full of people and then you like let's say some let's let's go with let's go with a uh 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 uh, uh African American people right yeah you're in a room specifically African American people and then you say nothing but pure anti African American jokes or just jokes that just you know jab at at at, at African Americans and nothing else like you're not joking about the latinos you're not joking about asian people you're just or not even joking about white people you're 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 just specifically targeting that demographic you it's clear to everybody that you're just using comedy for your racism and that's when it's not okay that's when i personally would definitely be like bro like read the room nobody thinks this is funny and if anyone is laughing they're not even giving you a full hearty laugh. They're actually just giving you a pity laugh. So just step on down and stop making a fool of yourself because it's ridiculous. You yeah, know what I mean? I get you. And then let's say let's say you're in a group of friends, right? And uh, it's not that situation with strangers. And your friend just starts joking about a lot, like a lot of you know offensive stuff, and you feel offended, but. Even when it comes to comedy, even when it comes to making jokes, you could read the person's body language and tone of voice and the delivery of the joke to to determine properly whether the joke was meant to be offensive and they're using it to just be like, oh, it's comedy. Like, I could say this or whether it truly was a joke to them or not. You know, it's like you, you could you could read them to determine whether it was just offensive or not. Um <clears throat> Like like before, like in high school, I I would do that a lot with my group of friends. I would joke about everything and anything. And some of them did get offended. And when they would get offended, I would be like, all right, I apologize. You know what I mean? Like, like I would explain to them that it was literally a joke, but I will s- stop with those specific types of jokes because it, it, it did offend them and therefore... I will no longer continue because out of respect, you know, they're my friends. I care about them. But someone who is literally just trying to be a, like saying jokes just to be, for the sake of being offensive, they will not stop. And that's when you know, like, OK, I got to do something about this. That's when you your turn to speak up and be like, bro, no, stop. Like, this, that's not a joke anymore. You're literally just spouting racism or, or offensive shit. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I stuck with racism, but yeah. uh, that's that's my point of view. It's very situational um as yeah i get you and i mean i have a very similar point of view yeah it's it's just you gotta you gotta be able to read the person and it it's it's very difficult when it comes to strangers because you never really know uh you, you you don't know them enough to to get a read on them um let's say if you're in that situation uh i would do what you did uh where i would just leave if i was getting offended or or if they were saying very offensive shit I would just leave and be like, nah, I'm not going to deal with this today. Like, I don't want to be a part of this group. Yeah, I get you. There was a a comedian that I saw on TikTok. Yeah. Where one of the jokes that he had was like, it was like Asian people, Asian people only really shop when there's like a good deal. Uh Uh-huh. Like, they're they're always about the deal. Like, it doesn't even matter if like they wanted the item or not. They're like, oh, I got it at a good deal. (laughs) Okay. And I realized the other day that I fall into that stereotype. Really? Yeah, because like I'm very I don't like to buy clothes because I feel like clothes are just like outrageously overpriced. Yeah. I, I like, agree. why am I spending like thirty five dollars on a hoodie? Yeah. Which mm-hmm. to some people is like thirty five. That's a good deal. But to me, I'm like eight dollars on a hoodie is a good deal. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> so. I never really buy clothes, but I bought clothes on old off of Old Navy. Uh-huh. And I spent like $50. I got three crew necks, which were $10 each, and then a hoodie for like $20. Okay. And bad. I felt proud of myself. I was like, yeah, that was a pretty good deal. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, man, I'm so Asian. <laughs> Wait, did, but did you need them? I did. Well... I, I I went to the site originally just to see. Just, there you go. I went to the site just <laughs> specifically to look at the clearance section. 
Because mm-hmm. I was like, if there's a good deal, I will buy it. So I went straight to clearance. Okay. And I and I found the three Kronex and the hoodie in the clearance aisle. And I did get a good deal. I got $35 off. Hey, there you go, man. <laughs> and I'm like, I fall into this Asian category so hard. <laughs> I no. felt proud of myself because I was like, yeah, it's a good deal. But it's it's funny that you bring that up because it's like that's one topic we never really discuss where it just comes to clothes. Oh, Cause, yeah. Because it's like, I don't know, man. It's so weird. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that just likes wearing a black shirt, not only because it's my, my uniform for work, but also for um, just because it's comfortable. You know, I don't have to think about oh what am i gonna wear today every time i wake up i just uh-huh. okay it's a black shirt just put it on but fucking god no ma- it doesn't matter where i look target walmart even some fucking like uh the se- second hand store down pacific somewhere like that like simple black shirts that like have no design they all go for they're so expensive and and even when walmart tries to sell you like a bundle of them they still sell it for like twenty five bucks, and I'm like, that, that it's only like three shirts for twenty five bucks. And it yeah. sounds kind of good, but it's like they have no design, and they're meant to be undershirts. Like well, they're not that special. Like come on, like me, they're like, literally just black shirts. Exactly. I'm like, at least make them five bucks. Like uh, three shirts, five bucks each, fifteen bucks. That that would be much better. But I think no. I only really feel that I feel that way about clothes because. Like I'm, I'm self conscious. This is a totally different topic from what we were talking about, by the way. That's fine. That's right. <laughs> Roll with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have to end the episode soon. But anyways, like I, my whole opinion with clothes, I think stems from the fact that I feel self conscious about like my size. Okay. So I never really want to like go out and buy like really nice clothes because like in the back of my mind, I have this idea that I'm gonna lose weight, and oh, then okay. I'm gonna look at this shirt. That I like, you really I got like- a, you that I bought at like you know H and M or Amber Crombie or something that was like fifty dollars, and then it's uh-huh. not gonna fit me right because I lost some weight. Uh huh. Okay. And I'm like, I just wasted fifty dollars. <laughs> that on a shirt that you only use for like a year because then you lost all that weight. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I get. So that, I get. That's you. my whole. And then like, like I want to buy like nice clothes too, like cardigans and button ups and stuff. Yeah. But because I'm on the bigger side, like it does, I to me, I don't look good in them. Like you can see how fat I look. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, I'm I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna stick to like a jacket and like a black shirt. <laughs> that's that's where I was. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say myself. I was like, I have a different perspective when it comes to fancy or at least good looking clothes. Because I'm like. Uh, even even if I do lose weight or let's say my body changes in a year and I can no- wear that shirt i still wouldn't feel bad because i'd be like okay at least i got that year to wear it and even though i spent 50 bucks on that one shirt i still got to enjoy it at least for some part of my life and therefore i could probably repurpose it or something whatever um but my issue when it comes to buying clothes or at least like expensive good looking clothes is how i look in it I, I I pick out this this outfit. It looks great. I'm like, yo, this is gonna look so good. I'm gonna be looking fly as fuck. But then I start like that 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 self consciousness starts like seeping in where I'm like, no, no, I'm not gonna look good. Like I'm 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 a big guy. Like that's not a style for big guys. It looks good because the models are skinny and 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 fit, so they make it look good. But then when I wear it, it's gonna make me look like my long hats are going to pop out and I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. And then I just end up not buying the clothes. Cause I'm like, I'll just stick to a black shirt. At least, at least, you know, I'll hide some of my fat here and there. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. That, that's, <clears throat> that's my issue with it. And then clothes are just so goddamn expensive too. I don't understand it. Yeah. I, it, it's ridiculous. Like those people who spend like, a hundred and fifty dollars on like that supreme north face like drop oh god no like i understand it's a brand and you're paying for the brand but it's like it's a shirt yeah it's like it's a jacket oh god and then it's like those people that don't wash the shirts even though they use them like i i i'm one of those people that like if it smells good and there's no stains whatsoever 
you could still use it. You know, you, it's not technically dirty in my mind. Um, but there's those people that fucking use a shirt daily or use the pants every single day for like a month and it starts smelling and it has all these weird stains but they're like no i don't want to wash it because machines are are going to ruin the 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 how pricey this shirt was or the how good these jeans are i'm like bro you're stinking out the place like you need to wash that shit <laughs> like dude you realize if you take those off they're gonna stand up by themselves <laughs> exactly yeah man but yeah i don't know that's my whole problem with clothes and then like Shoes, I only really see, like, the only time spending a lot of money on shoes is validated in my mind is if you're getting, like, like really nice shoes, like leather Oxfords. Oh, yeah. You those know? Are nice. Or, like, some, some really, like, quality boots or something, you know? Like, like, it has to be quality. It can't just be, like... Oh, I dished out 500 bucks on these, like, first edition Nike Jordan fucking Pokemon collab. Yep. Like, that to me, it doesn't make sense. See, what? like, I had the same perspective because our friend, well, I'm not going to say his name, but one of our friends, he's a huge sneakerhead. Um, and he's the type that that he will be in line in, in, for, for a day before, that sort of stuff just to get that special limited edition Jordans that are coming out. And he would like shell out 300 bucks just to get his shoes. Or, or even if he wasn't able to get it on the first day, he would still pay the overprice on eBay and stuff just to get the shoes he wants. And I was like, bro, why are you doing this? It's just, it's, they're just shoes. Like, why do you care so much about them? And why are you shelling out so much money to get them? And I had this negative opinion when it came to his hobby because online i would see all these people just collecting these endless shoes never using them never wanting to get them out of the box and just collecting them putting them in the storage locker to never see the light of day just just to say that they had it you know and i was like that's pointless you're literally wasting money for no reason you're not going to be able to use those shoes later on what what you know it's i had all these opinions about it but he our friend was able to change my mind at least for his situation because he actually buys and spends all this money for the shoes because he likes them and he will use them and he he he's not out there showing them off to everybody like yeah hell yeah these are brand new $500 i got the money for that he's not that type of person he's he gets them because he is passionate about it so it's like if I were to buy a game that was like limited edition collectors with a statue, I'm passionate about video games and the statue is is something that I use as decoration for my room and therefore I see it as worth it. And that's the same thing he does with sneakers. He he does he will use them eventually, but he's also like, you know, he takes care of them, he loves them, he feels a personal attachment to them. He's not just going to resell them for a higher price. He's not going to covet them. He's not going to fucking, you know, brag about them. So at least when it comes to my opinion of my friend being a sneakerhead, I, it changed into a positive view because once he explained it to me. See, I think I know your friend, the friend that you're talking about. And like, I get that he he likes them and he, you know, follows the brand. Maybe they're like a small creator that finally got to like hit it big and collab with Nike or something. Right. Yeah. But he does fall into that that fanboy kind of community where he like puts these sneakers away and hides them off because I know I've talked to him before and uh -huh. he has legitly bought like two pairs of the same shoes, one for him to wear and one for him to either keep and collect or just sell online. He has? Yeah. Oh, I I actually haven't heard of that. Like it's very it's very rare that he will, but when when it's like a for sure that he can secure like two pairs, he will buy two pairs. Oh, oh, see, I to my knowledge, he he only had like one pair of each, and and that and was just for his own point, personal like, collection. Like, if you want to spend your money doing that, fine. And I get like you get to wear the shoes now because you don't have to, you don't care, because you're like I have two pairs anyways. Yeah, like you have that 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 mint condition pair. 
Yeah, and I, I get that, but it's just like I don't know. They're just shoes. Yeah. I mean, don't and get it, me wrong. It can be said that can be said about any hobby, you know, like oh, they're just cards. They're just cars. They're just electronics. Like, I get that. That argument is not valid. But it's like when it's something that's supposed to be used, you know, like it's its sole purpose is to like be worn and to be walked in. Yeah. Right. Like you're kind of diminishing like it's it's no longer that item anymore. It's like people who collect ex- like extraordinarily rare cars and like never drive them. Mm-hmm. You know, they when they get those far, those barn finds of like. A 1960, a 1969 Shelby Cobra with like no miles on the odometer. Mm-hmm. Like it's no longer a car anymore. It's like it's just the image of a car. It, it's just a trophy. Yeah, and like people who collect those shoes and like keep them in storage lockers and like triple saran wrap them. Like they're no longer shoes. They're just the image of a shoe now. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I get you. And. <clears throat> that's why that's why I guess that was that was my point as well. Like like with shoes I really don't understand. I, I don't get the whole hype behind them and why they're so expensive and why people lose their mind over them. Um but at least at least with my with my opinion of my our friend, um, because I thought he was the type that, you know, he would use the shoes eventually, or at least um he had the sentimental uh attachment to them. That's why I I viewed him at least viewed him in a positive light because of it, because he's not just one of those people that really don't care about him. Like it, it, that's that's the thing that I don't understand. Those people that go try so hard to get these shoes and only see them as shoes. They only see them as an object. They don't they don't have no sentimental value. They don't like oh I got these new Lakers nineteen ninety nine uh, never worn mint condition shoes. Because, you know, I love the Lakers. I grew up loving Kobe. I grew up following their wins and losses. So, therefore, I love these shoes. No, they're like, oh, I, I don't care about these shoes. I just want them to be in mint condition. So, that way, once they get more pricey, I could just sell them off to someone who actually cares about it. And I'm like, th- those people are the ones that I'm like, I don't understand. Like, why why are you doing this? Like, why are you wasting your time on this when you could just be more productive? Yeah, I get you. Yeah, I feel like we attacked the sh- the sneaker community too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did. But I mean, like, there's some reason because at least, like, you know, with someone who collects Pokemon cards or Yu Gi Oh cards, right? Like, they can still use the cards. Like, they can play the game and like keep them in plastic and everything, and they'll still be like mint. Yeah. But it's like you wear a shoe and it grows a new crease. It's like, oh, it's no longer mint. Hmm. So I don't know. But it's not like it's not we're not we're not we're not attacking them. Well, yeah, we're not attacking or throwing shade at any of the community. Yeah, because no, I mean, you can all. like you can throw shade at any community. Like you people out there who collect like old school Apple computers, you have like a whole office full of like Apple ones and fucking the first mm-hmm. iMac. That's like I don't know. You can recycle them and get like a new iMac. Yeah, no, it's like it's like we're not we're not trying to purposely attack the you sneaker heads um just because we hate you or because we just we, we don't understand you therefore we don't like you no it's not it's not like that if anything we're we're just trying to express our our perspective on how how little we understand your hobby and yeah, therefore exactly we would gladly encourage you to explain to us why you know give us your reasoning as to why you collect them give us your reasoning as to why you're a sneakerhead. And we'll gladly, like, we, we just want to know. We want to learn more. Yeah, because, I mean, like, in my own in my own case, I would gladly go out there and collect, like, every single 90s Toyota. And it makes, mm-hmm. like, no sense because I would never be able to drive every single 90s Toyota. Mm-hmm. But I love Toyotas, and I love especially 90s Toyotas. Yeah, you have you have that <laughs> attachment to them. Yeah, so like I understand why you go out and collect shoes. It would be the same reason why I would go out and collect Toyotas. Mm-hmm. It's just cars are a lot more expensive than shoes. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's it's it, everything. Literally, like you said, like like I'm just reiterating. Um, you could say what we said about the sneakerheads. You could say about anything out there, and especially like in in my 
like you know talking about myself um I'm a, I'm a huge gamer and therefore i buy these physical copies of games like the discs themselves because i personally prefer discs over digital copies and you know you could easily be like why you know you're still buying the game you're still able to to play the game isn't that the whole point but i'm like no i personally like seeing the boxes i personally like seeing the discs and therefore i buy the discs even if it's like 60 bucks where i could buy it for 30 bucks on digital you know it's like i have that sentimental value of growing up with these discs and therefore i personally see them as having more value than digital so it's like you know all these arguments that we made or all the stuff we talked about sneakerheads you could say that about me being a gamer but that's that's what i'm saying it's like we we're not trying to attack you guys we're just trying to get more perspective yeah all right Victor, we gotta wrap it up because nature's calling <laughs> all right yeah this, this, <laughs> this podcast has run its course we kind of been ranting for a little bit there um but yeah uh, for you guys anyone listening if you made it this far thank you so much for for sticking around we love you we adore you and we do all this for you guys we appreciate you um and leave in the comments below leave your answers to the questions we had the moral the moral questions and if you're a sneakerhead uh you know give us your take on why you collect shoes and we'll you know we'll, we'll we love to hear more about that um, yeah or if you just collect anything tell us why you collect it yeah exactly oh we would love to hear about all the collections out there yeah but um you know don't forget to like and subscribe it helps us out a lot we're trying to reach 100 by the end of the year uh so let's let's, let's do it help us help you <laughs> exactly and uh, well thank you guys once again and hopefully we'll see you in the next episode yeah bye everybody stay beautiful <laughs>